All right, welcome to today's show. My name is Eric Coffey. I'm your host. Most of you probably already know me, but for the new people that don't know me, uh, a couple things we're going to go over today are some initiatives I start putting in the chat. But in case you miss out and you're not able to be with us the entire time, let me just show you what we're talking about. So we'll be discussing this particular prize, Energizing Rural Communities Prize. This is the conversation for today. Uh, we're going to be looking at these particular tracks and we'll be discussing them and what's the requirements, what does it look like, how do you become eligible for this. So I just want to let all those persons know who are here. Uh, if you miss out, this is the prize that we're discussing today. This is conversation. Uh, I hope that you get a chance to come back in and watch it later. But this is important. So really quickly, uh, I realized some things after I always start. Let me just drop this in here. Tomorrow, tomorrow, there is a webinar, right? Okay, I'm dropping that in the comments as well. Uh, again, for those early bird folks, we have not started the live session yet. There's 21 people here, but for the early bird folks, there is a webinar just talking about the requirements for this community prize. We're going to discuss it tonight. I'm going to spend about an hour with you going over it, tell you what we're doing, how we're involved. But also, I just want to share with the folks out there that there is a webinar tomorrow to attend. So if you get a chance, sign up for the webinar. If you miss out, there's an informational webinar tomorrow. In the webinar, do me a big, big, big favor. All right. This is going to help me. So help me help you. you see where it says affiliation. Guess what I want you to write under affiliation right here. Okay, can you all do that for me? Yes. So if you attend the webinar under affiliation, can you please write GovCon Giants? Let them know where you came from, who told you about this. Uh, that's going to help me as we're starting to start starting to track metrics. All right. So just want to let folks know this is what we're doing. Here's the webinar link. Um, and this is what we're discussing in today's conversation. All right. Cool. So again, uh, we haven't started just yet. Let me know who's in the room. All of you out there, tell me who's here. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been on live. Happy to be here. Happy to join you. Uh, so let me know who's here. Also, for those of you who are not yet in any of our programs, uh, we do have, we just opened up Academy 3.0. And uh, so it's opened up again. So if you're not in our programs, visit GiantsCourse.com. I'll drop that in the chat as well. So we just opened up. It's open enrollment until the end of March. Uh, but we're not discussing that today. We're discussing the Department of Energy. But I did want to let folks know the link here will take you there as well. And uh, so if you're not already enrolled in Academy 3.0, uh, I encourage you to do that. We can talk about it later on in the conversation. Now, tell me who you are. What it is that you do? Tell me your industry. Tell me the city so we can try and help you. All right. I want to see who's out here, what they're doing. Um, and we're going to sign up for some things. Okay. I want people. So who's out here in the room? Let me know who's out here. Sam Smith, welcome. Who else we have out here? Tell me who's here. Tell me your industry. Tell me your sector. We're going to wait a couple more minutes because, again, we're starting at 7.05. It's 7.06. So we'll give folks a couple minutes to tell me about your industry, who you are. Use this as your networking session. So I want to know who's out here. All right. I'm looking for some requests. I'm looking for talk to me. Keep putting it in the chat. Introduce yourselves. So that we know how we can best who we're talking to, who's the conversation about. I'm going to drop. Welcome, welcome, welcome for those of you who are here today.
I'm looking for those requests. Give me a second. All right. Okay, I'm back. All right, let's see who we have here. 38 people hit the like button. Let's see who's here. Tell me who you are, what you do. All right, welcome Maria. Welcome Yvette. Welcome Raheem. All right, as my man Charles says, hit the like button. <clears throat> Craig of Heavy Copper Solutions. <clears throat> no worries, Craig, you're all good with me. Who else is here? All right, my man, Derek Lowe, Imagery LLC, Video Production. Who else is on here? Sam Smith, NASSF, Enterprise Commercial Equipment Leasing. All right, we got Chanel Johnson. Tell me what you do. My man, Brian Amster, Qual LED, Electrical Contract Arizona, Specialist in Lighting and Fire Alarm Systems. Love it. Robert Heatley, we have a catch up, brother. Robert Heatley's here. DMV Logistics, F Bomb Trucking. All right, I see you, Stephanie Richardson Parker. I see you, Teddy. All right, I see you, John Smith, John Phillips. Sorry, John Phillips, Missouri Business Consultant. Elijah Whitehead, haven't heard that name in a while. Welcome, Elijah. All right, Lloyd, glad to see you back. All right, who else? Who else? Good stuff. All right, so 43 people on the call. Great. I'm excited. Uh, really quickly. Uh, like I said, today we're discussing this program here. All right, so we're gonna, we're discussing this program here, uh, Energizing Rural Communities Prize. A couple things. We are, I'm going to say this real quick. I'm dropping this link in here. Okay. All right. So that link is going to take you to this particular form for technical assistance. Uh, we are, if you would like help, technical assistance filling out and applying for this particular prize, put your name on the form, okay? So again, if you want help, technical assistance, with completing this application process, going through this process, right, that we're going to discuss tonight, please put your name in the form, okay? Please put your name in the form. In fact, I'm going to add that form here. Okay. I want everyone. Okay. There you go. Gelcutter.com slash DOE. That's where you're headed. All right. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Happy to have you here as always, as you know. And we're gonna get to it, all right? I'm excited. All right, so let's discuss what is the Department of Energy's Community Prize Program, how we're involved, and what are we doing to help? So right now, really quickly, um, so this particular program, it's called Energizing Rural Communities Prize. Notice it says the word prize. All right, so here's the program. And, and again, if you can't hear me, if you can't see me, just let me know, please. All right, so again, it's called Community Prize. This is the program. Uh, it's $15 million, right? And uh, why am I talking about this? Because Oftentimes, we don't get a chance to know what programs exist out here. And so we want to make you aware of the different things that exist so that if you decide that this is an opportunity that makes sense for you, uh, we would love for you to pursue this particular opportunity. I'll tell you what makes this unique. As you see in the description, uh, we're going to go through the requirements, right? Uh, individuals can apply. Companies can apply, nonprofits can apply. So you do not have to have an actual corporation to apply. Ooh, like that? All right. 
So we're going to pull up the actual rules. We'll go through the rules. These are the rules. We're not going to go through all of them, but I just wanted to let you know so that you're aware. Is this big enough? Nah, it looks a little bit small. Let's like make this bigger on the screen. Okay, how's that? Is that big enough? Okay, good. All right. All right, so this is what we're discussing here. Uh, so $15 million prize money. There's two different tracks. And essentially, there's a partner track, which is up to $10 million in cash prize pool. There's a finance track, which is $5 million cash prize pool. They're going to make up to up to 60 cash prizes for 100,000 each and in-kind mentorship services up to 30 prizes, 100,000 each on the finance track. And then on phase two, they're going to do 20 awards of 200,000 each based on a uh, selected plan based on implementation and on the finance track of the 10 awards of 200,000 each. And that's the way it breaks down. Let's go into dig into some of the requirements. Uh, so here are some of the key dates. Phase one's open March the 1st, which is approximately 19 days ago. Uh, closes May the 24th, so you still have time. Uh, phase one announcements will be in July. Phase two opens July. Phase two closes July 2024, which is next year. All right. What's the goal of the program? So this program falls under the Department of Energy's $1 billion investment in energy improvements and rule for remote areas. All right. This was the name of the program. Uh, and the goals, specific three goals, deliver measurable benefits to energy customers in rural or remote areas by funding energy projects that lower energy costs, improve resilience, or reduce environmental harm, demonstrate newer rural remote energy systems modeling, uh, which uses climate resilient technologies and new business structures that promote economic resilience, new finance mechanisms, and then third, build clean energy, knowledge, capacity, and self-reliance in rural America. So you're saying to yourself, Eric, I don't, I don't know anything about the energy space. Okay, so we talk about delivering measurable benefits to energy customers in rural or remote areas, right? All right, all of us know ways because if you're a homeowner or a renter, you know how much energy costs. We know how much our light bills cost, right? So we know, or I assume you know, but we'll talk through it, some ideas on how you can save energy. Right. So what are they looking for? The goal. Successful competitors will propose partnership and activities that advance clean energy projects in rural or remote communities for the purposes of improving the overall cost effectiveness, cost effectiveness of energy generation, transmission, distribution, um, siting or upgrading transmission lines, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, providing or modernizing electric generation facilities, developing microgrids, improving energy efficiency. Right. How do we prove energy efficiency? How do we improve energy efficiency, right? So tell me, so what are some of the ways that you improve energy efficiency? Now, again, let me just make sure that people are, I'm gonna drop this in here real quick again, this link. All right, but how are some, what are some of the ways in which you can improve energy efficiency? Just drop some ideas right here below in the chat. Maria, okay. And by the way, um, we've already had two technical assistance training for all of our members. So if you're a member and you're Academy 3.0, make sure you're on the email list because we've already had two trainings on this. We've already put together, uh, helped people put together submissions. We've given them outlines. We've given them everything that they need. There you go. <clears throat> Toya, purchase energy efficient appliances. Exactly. Correct. What other ways? All right. Look, pro coffee, light bulbs. Exactly. What are some of the other ways on there? Robert says solar. Correct. All right. What else? What are some other ideas that we have on there? How else can you improve energy efficiency? Think about all the things in your property that use, someone says insulation. Insulation of what? So what else? What other things can we do to improve energy efficiency? All right. Toya says, I live in a rural area. Perfect. We'll get into rural areas. There you go, Tevin. That's right. Roof coatings, right? All right. Maria says, window tinting. So there's a lot of ways that we can help solve these issues of increasing energy efficiency. What about um, who else? Correct. Dr. Paul said, wind power generation. That's correct. Uh, that's a little bit fancy. 
Uh, how about Earl says upgrade your AC unit? Simple solution, right? Getting more energy efficiency AC units or heaters. Um, so again, there's a lot of ways which you can help improve energy efficiency. All right. So now let's define, how do they define rural areas? Uh, so the idea is principles of equity and justice. We've got implementation of the program. All right. Now let's go into, I want to skip over that. Uh, the goal, right, it says here, replicability is a key to market adoption of technologies to benefit rural or remote areas beyond those participating in the ERA program. Achieving rec replicability requires that barriers to install and operate energy products in rural remote communities are mitigated. So they want us to help design a program that can be replicatable. So let's go back. I want to show you what's the definition of rural. Here it is. So it says, a successful submission demonstrates the project's benefits a rural or remote area. So rural or remote is the key. The term rural or remote is defined by this section by Parson Law as city, town, or unincorporated area that has a population of not more than 10,000 inhabitants. Uh, applicants must identify at least one area in the United States with a population of not more than 10,000 uh, using the Census Bureau, that fin Census Bureau figures that benefits from the proposal. All right, the identified area must be either a town, a city, or an incorporated municipality, or a census designated place or similar discrete and identified community that is not located within an incorporated municipality. See Appendix B for additional information on requirement. All right. So again, uh, we're looking for, and by the way, do we all can we all read requirements? It says, okay, submissions from individuals. Organizers, communities, okay, have they have not have typically received funding. So Alex says, Eric, let's do the KISS principle. Thank you, Alex. I love the KISS principle. This is not a contract, Alex. This is a prize, and the prize award is one hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So to Alex's point, uh, Alex, yes, uh, the reason why, and again, I don't want to speak for uh, the Department of Energy because I didn't write this, uh, but I, I will say that historically the reason why, Alex, uh, they use the words prizes, uh, sweepstakes, things like that, Alex, is so that they can allow people that traditionally don't respond to these th type of uh, programs to help out. And so by making it not a not a contract, not a grant, it allows them to be very flexible with the rules of who can participate. So, yes, it's equivalent of a contract by uh, most people's definitions. However, uh, and when you think about a contract with the government, typically they have to follow right FAR or CFR. Right. They got to follow the rule book in terms of how it's given out, how do they evaluate it, all those kind of things. This, um, for the sake of keeping it simple, is considered a prize. You still, you as an individual or as an entity, will still receive the $100,000. So if you do a submission that's accepted, you're going to be awarded $100,000 that you don't have to pay back to anyone. So um, I hope that helps clarify it for, for anyone else that may be thinking that. Now, one thing I want to say, uh, I have a solution, uh, solar, smart metering with battery generation that can improve energy efficiency. Uh, now, Axel, I love your idea, but I want people to know for this particular uh, prize, right, we don't have to, we're not, this is not uh, a technology um, grant or necessarily has to be some wild like, don't give me your patented ideas, right? We want we want to keep it simple because the idea is that we're going to a rural community where people have typically been forgotten and typically have been left out or marginalized, and so we want something that we can that they can adopt and then replicate for other rural communities. So I want you to keep the big picture in mind. Uh, most again, again, if you come from a rural community. My experiences of living in rural communities, 
typically those uh, the people that live there are very leery of government or big government. And so if you're trying to do something that's kind of too far out, it may not be received wide adoption. <laughs> so just think about that. Um, again, I, I would bring it down to something that, like you said, that's uh, non-intrusive. Because again, the, the goal is to receive maximum adoption. All right. Makes sense. All right. And by the way, keep asking questions. I love, I do not, it doesn't bother me if you ask questions. I'm not offended. <laughs> um, trust me. Uh, this is the, the whole goal, right? Is to introduce programs that are not widely being touted, right? So, we we all see and to, to to for Alex's sake, we all see like these big infrastructure plans and all this money coming down. But then like where does it go? We're like, well, who got the money and where was it awarded? And so we don't typically when they give these things names and they call them different things than what you're traditional looking for, and they're on places that we're not knowing where to turn and to look for, then it makes it difficult for some of us who are who have the ability to do these things to actually help the government out and are asking for our help. So now to Maria's point, let's get down to what, what some of the requirements are. Yeah, all right. So let's go in. So again, for if you're just joining us, submissions from individuals, organizations and communities, Right, they have historically not received DOE funding or encouraged, so they're trying to make this very flexible in terms of the requirements, so that they can get the best ideas for people who actually um, can actually help bring this to fruition, help deliver, help create programs that work. So to me, um, this looks like them taking the bottom-up approach instead of the top-down approach. That's the way I see it. Which is makes sense, right? Like people like Toya, who lives in these communities, uh, she's a good candidate for someone to offer a suggestion for how to fix her community. She lives there. Who better to to offer up a solution for that? Again, if you want help, I just dropped in there a link. If you want technical assistance on helping to fill this out, please fill out that link. Okay, we're going to be helping support businesses at the technical assistance, but please, you got to put your name in the database and fill out the link. Uh, and as always, if for some reason you don't, you missed the links, you missed the site, uh, our numbers are in the chats, make sure you call us and Erica or email us or text us and we'll send you this information, we'll send you the links so that you can have this information even after beyond today's live session. All right, so let's go into the goals. So the, so the goal, right, all right, we want to deliver measurable benefits uh, to energy customers in rural and remote areas by funding energy products that lower energy costs, improve resilience, demonstrate new rural energy systems, build clean energy capacity, and self-reliance. All right. So now, what are, what are they paying you to do, right? What is $100,000 for? Right. So the goals of each track, let's stick, let's just, again, and, and please, please, please stop me. I know I'm an engineer. I know sometimes I'm nerdy and sometimes I use words that are not like down to earth or whatever you might want to say. So please just stop me and say, Eric, like you're over my head. So let me know. Um, Lion Andrew said, should we register with Hero X? Yes, I would register to be on their web on their list so that you can get updates on everything that's going on. So yes. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, like, just stop me, please. Please stop me. Um, the only person that ever stops me when I speak high is my son. And he and he just looks up words. I, I told him something this morning about triangulate. He's like, okay, hold on, wait, let me look that up. So everyone else, all adults for some reason, just don't know what I'm saying. And then they, they don't want to seem silly, so they don't stop me. And then they end up missing the message. Please stop me. <laughs> all right. Cool. Now, um, partner track goals. And I think this is really important, right? And if you're just joining us, this is what we're discussing, energy, Energizing Rural Communities Prize, right? This is the prize. Uh, there's a webinar tomorrow. Here are the tracks. Here's the timelines. Here's the dates. Screenshot it. 
if you have to. We've got the links in there. We've dropped a couple of links. Uh, I'll drop the links again. Okay. So here's some links. This is they're having a webinar tomorrow. Tomorrow there's a webinar. All right. Here's the registration. On the registration, under affiliation, please just put GovCon Giants. That's all. Just like, hey, give me some props. You heard about it here first. Let's let them know where it came from. All right. And um, so this is the template for the proposal they're asking us to submit. So it's going to go through this. Now, what are they? What is the hundred thousand dollars for? Right? What is the hundred thousand dollars, Eric? What do I have to do for the hundred k? Facilitate new or existing partnerships that enable development of clean energy projects in rural and remote communities. Successful competitors will create connections that lead to. Oops, I don't know why my mouse moved down. Sorry. Uh, so successful competitors will create connections that lead to collaborative efforts for the development of clean energy projects in rural or remote communities. Collaborative efforts could include providing engineering services to advance project concepts, encouraging multiple communities to aggregate similar energy projects to unlock economies of scale, or facilitate equipment acquisition. Okay, so to all my people, it doesn't say go out and build solar farms. It doesn't say go out and buy a whole bunch of air conditioning units. Okay, I want my people, like, this is so much for me the importance of reading and understanding requirements so the goal is to right successful successful competitors will create connections that lead to collaborative efforts for the development of clean energy projects all right uh to toya said triangulate that's a qualitative word for me <laughs> um and so, and I and I don't even remember the context, Toya, of what I was saying. So I, I can't even remember. I just I just be talking. All right. So that is the goal for the partner track. All right. Now, Toy, please expand on your question. What type of projects have been done before? Um, expand on that question for me, please, Toya. So the goal, right? It does not say that you're gonna buy a bunch of AC units or change a bunch of light bulbs. It is to create connections that lead to collaborative efforts for the development of a clean energy project, right? In a rural or remote community. Do we all understand that? Please, if you understand it, yes, give me a thumbs up, yes. Eric, I get it, right? I, we need to understand this part. Connect, finance track goals, connect communities to capital for current or future clean energy projects by developing innovative and functional business models, new approaches to financing clean energy projects, the expansion of existing business models to new remote areas, and innovative ways to leverage other fiscal incentives such as tax credits. Okay, now, in our last technical assistance workshop that we taught last Friday, we have people who are familiar with entities, right, that are already doing this in major cities. So we have people that are already doing programs in major cities, and we want to help the smaller rural areas adopt similar type style programs. So that's what they're proposing in terms of the finance. So there, are, so there are things out here that are working in other places. But again, I can tell you as a person who comes from Miami, in Miami, we have programs that we were doing um, in terms of like, by the way, and let me just put this on the screen, window caulking, um, we're, we're sealing air vents, we were uh, sealing, replacing windows, we're putting, um, the weather stripping underneath the doors, pointing the bricks inside of uh, the bricks on the outside. So all these things we were offering for free for certain residents in Miami-Dade County. However, when I went to a much smaller county, a much smaller area, uh, then they didn't have those kind of programs, right? They, they had not ever seen the kind of programs that we saw when I was in a bigger city. So again, the goal, right, is is right is is creating uh, connections that lead to collaborative efforts for the development of clean energy projects and communities. So it's not saying you can't take your big city idea and bring it to the rural area, but if they don't want to adopt it or you can't get them to adopt it, then you've technically you've not you failed, right, for lack of better words. But again, that's what the money for is to see if in fact you can create some sort of collaborative efforts based on your idea, based on your plan, and get them to actually adopt this, right? And then that's phase one. So let's keep going. 
the, propo the plan to propose activities that you aim to pursue during phase two, right? So again, phase one, right? Um, phase one is, right, collaboration efforts, right? And then phase two is to get them to actually, right, pursue, right, these particular activities that you talked about in phase one. Make sense? Now, Robert, what do you got about deliver trucks for delivery and trash? You probably, is you even listening to me? If you can show me how delivery and trash removal saves them on energy, I'm, I'm down for it. All right. Uh, Toya says, I need that program here. Toya, that program is here. That's why we're here tonight. Toya, the program is here and it's real and it exists. That's why we're talking about this. It is here. This program is real. This is why we're here. So for all of us that are just joining us now, we're discussing energy, energizing rural communities prize. This is an info session. Uh, it's $15 million prize. They're giving out $100,000 cash rewards. Uh, they're going to give out up to 60 of them on phase one and then $200,000 uh, rewards on phase two for 20 entities. So that's what we're discussing here. We're just kind of going through the rules and let people understand it. All right. But yes, toy that program is here and it exists. All right, let's go in. So the plan should also demonstrate various ways and experiences of resource competitors will leverage in phase two and how proposed activities will contribute to a rural or communities, a rural or remote communities clean energy goals. So again, we're looking at clean energy goals. Ooh, Mark Higgins, I did that before. Closed cell spray foam. Yes, Mark. I've done that before. I did that for a, uh, um, a nonprofit uh, organization that gave out food. So I actually did, I spray foamed their entire in the inner building. Oh, uh, yes. And so Toya, but that's great. So again, the point of this is now you can actually take those same ideas for the weather caulking, window caulking, stripping, and apply that to your community. Yes, it can. It needs to be. A, it no, not can it. Can it be? It must be a product that creates efficiency, right? Because that's the goal. All right. So let's go back. Partnership track. Partnership track. Right. We gave examples of activities. So again, competitors encourage to think creatively about this. Right. Uh, building relationships among multiple rural or remote communities that intend to improve resilience of their electricity systems through upgrading transmission. Uh, more communities that achieve economies of scale by aggregation of equipment. Um, development team to facilitate the development of a clean energy project, such, such as creating a team that might include developers, stakeholders, financiers that are responsible for working with a utility, create a legal pathway for interconnecting a clean energy project. All right, developing contact between a local government and clean energy training organization to build a local workforce to support a clean energy project. Identifying regional impacts of climate change that reduce the resilience and reliability of local energy systems such as droughts, wildfires, hurricanes, or significant weather events. Developing plans to improve energy systems to mitigate climate changes. All right. And so again, successful submissions will include a description of the target outcome that you aim to deliver at the completion of phase two. So to Maria's point, right, phase one is what is your big idea, right, and what is that you're trying to accomplish? And then in phase one, you want to show that you can get all the stakeholders together to actually execute on that big idea. And then phase two is, all right, let's go ahead and test the big idea, right, at a small level. So uh, successful submissions will include a description of target outcome you aim to deliver at the completion of phase two. So phase two. You'd like to have preliminary engineering studies or designs, um, assessments, uh, utility analysis or takeoff agreements, hiring or building a team to complete the projects, co-sign memorandum of understanding between organizations and outlines aim to achieve, and um, let's see, other outcomes critical to improving the deployment into the community. All right. Questions, comments, concerns. By the way, hit the like button. 70 people watching. Hit the like button. If you're just joining us, uh, we're having technical assistance training uh, on this Energizing Rural Communities Prize. 
Uh, we've been doing this a couple times on our people who are already members of Academy 3.0. Um, and so we are sharing uh, this particular opportunity with folks out there who may not be aware of this. And so, as you know, uh, I like to go beyond standard uh, what exists that we know about publicly on SAM.gov uh, to opportunities that may exist for folks out here. I would definitely consider this low-hanging fruit because one is you don't need to be registered in SAM. You don't have to have a DUNS. You don't have to have a CAGE. You don't have to have a certification. Uh, and you don't even have to have a company because individuals can apply. So if that's not low hanging fruit, I don't know what else is. Maria's right. I do read fast. Um, but it, again, if you have questions about this stuff, let us know. Uh, let me go back. Let me fix this. All right, there you go. All right, so if you have questions about this, there's our email on the screen, um, there's a text line, and you can go to govhunter.com slash TOE to register for technical assistance. All right, that's my recommendation for folks out here. One second. All right, there you go. All right, let's see what the comment says. All right, uh, let's see. Does a local church count as a partner? Yes, uh, we'll get into that. Would permeable con concrete products to real access be considered environmental energy savings? Um, I'm not sure, Mark, uh, but if it does reduce greenhouse effect and, and drainage to reduce flooding, then I would say yes. Uh, you know, Queen Lee says, so concept testing will be a small group. If you're successful, then you might be invited to phase two, correct. All right, uh, someone says, how do I register for the webinar? Let me drop the webinar link in here. There's the webinar link. Just so he said, wait, what? Yep. Charles, so you do not have to apply. This is a good question. You do not have to apply for a location where you live at. You can do this in a, I, I mean, I don't live in a location with 10K people, but an hour from me, there's a location with 10K people who's probably not reading this information. And so they're not aware this stuff even exists. LinkedIn user says, I used to work for the Department of Energy Headquarters as a contract specialist. Sounds like a person we need to know. So uh, DM me. I'd be curious to talk about, to see how your experiences were with the Department of Energy. Okay. Um, Mark, but again, don't, Mark, unless you have uh, this, you have access to the solution uh, readily available, I wouldn't make, I wouldn't go crazy um, with it unless it was something that you actually had ready access and that you could implement. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up. And I want to show you some other things on this because someone asked me about partnerships. So let's talk about it. By the way, I hope I have 79 people hit the like button on this. All right. Competitors must identify one or more barriers that rural communities face in financing. Hold on, wait, that's the finance track. 
I personally like the partner track better. So we went over this, the partner track, we went over the submission requirement. Let me scroll down real quick because we have 20 minutes left. All right, so let's look at the requirements to submit. Here you go, submission requirements, how to enter. Go to Hero X website. It shows you where to display. Competitors also have the ability to form teams or find partners through this platform. I encourage to do multiple, multiple disciplinary teams. Uh, they do have on here, right? There's teams on here listed. There's 521 innovators, 43 teams right now. Okay. So, so there are on here people listed on the website as it shows and 43 teams. Uh, let's go back to the site. All right. So the following items constitute the phase one submission package for partner track and submit through Hero X platform. You must identify area of not more than 10,000 people. This is what they want. Okay, cover page, summary slide, three minute video, and a partnership plan and evidence of commitment. That's the requirements. Uh, yes, this is recorded um, and it will post it everywhere where you can watch it. So the recording will be on Facebook, the recording will be on YouTube, and the recording will be on LinkedIn. Correct, Alex. The price point qualifies loading of fruit. That's correct, Alex. The prize is similar to a grant as you don't have to repay the award amount. Yes, yes, and yes. Alex hit the nail on the head. All right. Uh, Jane says, I noticed you can sign up as a reviewer. Is there any compensation benefits to that? I'm not sure, Jane. I did not write this. I'm just sharing with you uh, what's publicly available. So I don't have any insight knowledge outside of what's publicly available. Um, but that's a good question to tomorrow when they do the actual webinar to pose that question on the webinar. All right. But let's get the requirements, cover page, summary slide, three minute video and a partnership plan uh, and evidence of commitment. That's the requirements. That's it. OK. And uh, just so you know. They've made it really easy. They even gave us a template. This is a template that you can get uh, from their website that you can use to submit. This is their template, right? Look at their template. Team name, first and last name. I hope everyone can fill that out. Project location, what's the location that you plan to service? Short description, a clear and concise description of your team, organization, your mission, and the goal of your activity and long-term clean energy project, recommended length, 50 to 200 words. This is not an exercise on how long you can write. 50 to 200 words. All right, partnership plan. Describe previous experience of working in rural remote communities uh, or overburden in underserved communities or other transferable experience, include examples of past success fairs which may um, form in a project partnership plan. So description of the competitors, previous experience working with rural communities, description of competitors, previous experience working with overburdened and underserved communities, a description of established practices. All right, now partnership plan. So what happens is if you don't have any experience working in these communities, what are they doing? They're allowing you to create partnerships and teams. Guess who? Someone already brought it up. I think it was here, right? Church, does a church count as a partner? Ohioans for a humanity. Yes, if you're gonna be working with, uh, looking to partner with an organization that's already working in this community, churches are make great partners. They make excellent partners because why? Every rural community has churches. Every church has people in them that they are already in the community, they live in the community, they work in the community, they sit on boards, they sit, on, they sit on organizations, they have jobs in those communities. So they make excellent partners to help you um, meet that requirement. So thank you for that. All right. Um, no, I didn't read your mind. This just makes sense. So they've done all this stuff, right? What are expected outcomes, impacts, success metrics? So how is your program? What are your outcomes? Description of your outcomes impact uh, to determine 
how they improve partnerships, supporting a clean energy project, description of credible methods and metrics to evaluate it, uh, smart goals, description of how the competitor's goals align with the prize goals, and description of ambitious and achievable deliverables that a competitor will accomplish during the 12 months after receiving the funds. All uh, right. Uh, budget for your proposed activity, description of resources you need, description of uh, resource strategies they can plan and utilize to execute the proposed activity, proof of commitment from target organization, uh, such as a letter of commitment, right, um, or funding agreement. By the way, by the way, okay, uh, I want to talk a touch on this issue before we close out. Don't let me forget, Maria, about this whole letter of commitment thing, all right? Um, strategy for or for achieving community energy goals after completion of the prize. So again, this is their template. All right, I do not. I want to go. Let me go back. I'm jumping around because we're running out of time. All right. It says, all right. It looks like everybody's a team of one, so we need to be on the team. If so, how? Uh, I would look at forming my own team um, because. You can create your own team with with organizations and people that you know. Here within our organization, GovCon Giants, uh, people that are inside of our paid programs, we are putting helping them put teams together. Like I said, every Friday we're now doing training with these programs and helping people respond and bid. So we're doing that internally here with our members. Uh, unfortunately, right now we can't take on everybody. That's why if you're just joining us, we encourage you. Please, if you could fill out this survey, that would be helpful if you want assistance with this. All right. So this is our form. This is our internal form that we're using to help to see um, how we can service more people. So, again, if you want us to help you with this outside of here, uh, fill out that form. Now, let me get to this, the score. I want you guys. I want to cover this because it's important. And I want to show you because I think a lot of times people think this is harder than it appears. So I want to show you how much easier it is than you believe. All right. Uh, and by the way, yes, our courses are opened up until the end of March. So if you're not inside of one of our programs, uh, you can get in as low as $7.99 for six months. Just visit GiantsCourse.com for information on that. All right. And it's open again. All right. So we'll drop that link in here. But real quick, real quick, real quick. All right. So now you're going to do your three minute video pitch plus your agreement. This is how they're scoring the items. And again, all this is on their website. This is not air coffee. This is on their website. I'm just reading it out loud for you. This is how they're scoring the items. So your three minute video um, score statements is three, percentage is 12%. Your partnership plan and evidence of commitment is 87%. Uh, relevant experience 17, proposed activities 25. So this plan and evidence of commitment is 87 percent all right uh, this talks about the pitch now so since that's 87 percent let's spend the last couple minutes going over that all right so this is 87 percent of the determination of whether or not you win you could get this right and mess up basically everything else and still be awarded a prize so let's focus in on the 87 percent so it says write a detailed partnership plan, including a narrative describing the partner plan activities, resource capabilities. A template is available in the draft partnership plan. All right. Let me try to help people out here. They are giving you partnership plans templates. Okay, I've already downloaded that. All right, so I already downloaded that template. That's not the one I wanted, but that's fine. Um, so evaluation criteria for partnership plan, experience, proposed activities, expected outcomes, budget staff, strategy for achieving goals, and description of mission, description of work, description of competitors' experience, established practices, description of experiences. All right. For partners proposed during phase two, we're, let's, let's focus on phase one, not phase two. I want to show you. Okay, this is finance track. Hold on.
Oh, ja. Okay. You see here what says. Partnership plan and evidence of commitment. I guess I read it too fast. The partnership plan may also include evidence of commitment from organizations with a competitor they'll be partnering, such as letters of commitment and memorandums of understanding. Okay. All right. So we literally, um, in our technical assistance session last week, we helped put together, right, uh, memorandum of understanding and we put together a sample letter of commitment. So again, um, I want to encourage you to look outside of uh, what, and what I did was I showed people how you can actually use um, chat GPT to put together, let me see if I can help you do it real quick. You know, I love chat GPT. Uh, let me see, I'm going to do this live on the screen with tech with jeffrey let me see who gave me a good idea okay chris page more let's use chris page more all right so we're gonna do um write me a memorandum of understanding right is that what they said miranda of understanding Um, we got Chris Page Moore. And um, I do First Baptist Church or and someone put on here um, no um, or um, changing making energy efficient energy project i'm gonna put i'm gonna put it this way how about that i wonder where i've been search to find a love within I came back to let you know I got a thing for you and I can't let it go. So again, I'm trying to take away excuses from people. I'm trying to take away the excuses. I'm not about to let y'all have no excuses. You're not, you cannot sit here and say, Eric, I can't solve this. I don't know how to do this. Where'd I get a sample? Where'd I get a template? Right? So, there it is. All right. Come on. It's, that's right. It's Tech with Jeffrey. It's 2023. It's 2023. You cannot make excuses. All right. Look, we're using technology. We're using AI. Uh, don't say, I don't have a lawyer, I don't have this, I don't have that. I'm not going for it. I'm not. We are, and again, if you're on my LinkedIn, you see I've been posting about chat and they've been trying to rip me up like, oh, I'm not saying that you're using chat to write your proposal, but sample letter of commitment, um, they're asking for memorandum of understanding, right? If you don't have that stuff, which most of us don't have that kind of stuff, Okay, once you carved out your idea and what you're going to do, we threw that thing in chat and let chat write up an MOU, right? And that MOU, and then let them look. Chris Page Moore with First Baptist Church. All right. And we wrote it up. So again, role responsibility, CPM. They even shortened his name. Let's go through it. All right, this MOU between Chris Page Moore and First Baptist Church regarding the Energy Project and Partnership with the Department of Energy. Purpose. Set forth the terms and conditions. Background: CPM was energy expert consultant, experience in every space-based organization with commitment to environmental stewardship and social responsibility. Recognizing the shared values and objectives, CPM and FBC have identified an opportunity to collaborate on an energy project to promote clean, efficient, and sustainable energy solutions for church and the broader community. 
So again, um, when we go back to this, I just want to make sure that you guys have all the tools and the resources. Um, Dr. Paul Thompson, yes, I'm well aware of uh, Jasper, um, but I found Jasper much harder to use. Um, I actually purchased Jasper and um, Jasper asked me too many questions to help me to write rather than just write for me. Chat just allows me to keep writing and talking. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really mess with Jasper like that. So again, if you want help, if you, if you would like for us to help provide you with technical assistance, all right, um, here's a link on the screen. Make sure you fill out the link, um, uh, on the screen right now. Okay. Fill out the error table. Uh, you can also type in govconeric.com. Slash join. That will. I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. GovConEric.com slash doe. That will take you to the registration page for technical assistance help. Uh, we will be supporting uh, this particular initiative. We're already again. If you're not registered in our programs, um, we do have. Um, um, go come through another sign up for, I'm already ready with it. Okay, so there's only, so line imagery, we only have one program. We do not have multiple programs. So we have one program and we'll talk about that. We'll close out with this to answer your questions. So we have one program. This particular, our Academy 3.0 is, um, a video repository. So what we have is three different payment plans, but it's the same program. Now, on the different payment plans, you're going to have, there's a six month plan and then there's an annual plan. So you're going to have access to different things. But essentially, if you want assistance from us, you're going to have to buy either an annual plan or a lifetime plan. So the six month plan is going to give you access to our Academy 3.0 video repository which has on there all the training regarding uh, proposal writing, business development, um, you know, bidding opportunities, talking to government officials, uh, all that stuff is in Academy 3.0. So that's in there. However, the difference is if you want us, if you want our GovCon Grow Lab, if you want the technical assistance training, you're going to have to go to at least the uh, middle package. So, but the program, but the terms of the programs, we have one program. It's just the different payment options is what's the difference between it. All right. What else? What other questions that we have today that I can help you with? You find people out here before we leave today. I think I did a pretty good job, if I say so myself. I hope that you all sign up and register for this particular webinar tomorrow. Uh, I hope that you register uh, for technical assistance if that's what you're looking for from us. Um, if you missed this particular show, go back and watch it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we want to bring light to more programs that are sometimes buried within legislation and buried on websites and not posted on SAM, or maybe they are posted on SAM and we just don't get a chance to um, find them or identify them. So again, um, our phones are live. You can text us. You can call us. Uh, we respond to our messages. Uh, you can email us. Erica is our resource specialist. If you're in one of our programs and you're not aware of any of these things, make sure that you are on the email list, right? Um, even if you're not registered in any of our programs, make sure you're on our email list so that you're aware of these things that exist, right? Um, so, um, so again, we don't, when you say proposal assistant, uh, we teach you about writing proposals. We don't actually write anything for anyone, right? We can't afford to write people's proposals. Uh, however, yes, we go in there. I have sample proposals for service-based businesses, for IT companies that we've used in the past, winning proposals that are in there. We teach you how to actually go through and write them, but we cannot assist you in writing. That's a different thing. Because when people say assistance, they actually want someone to do stuff for them um, and and then all the programs are training they're not actually doing it for you so i just want to make sure that distinction is clear all right what else 
Anything else? Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share this with all your friends, family, loved ones, concerned ones. Uh, listen, do not think that the world is a zero sum game. There's abundance out here for all of us. So I want you to have an abundant mindset. Share with as many people as humanly possible so that you can uh, create opportunities for yourself. Just think about sharing in terms of how many more people that you can bring into the mix to help support what it is you're trying to do. Um, I've gotten everywhere that I am today by sharing endlessly, uh, giving tirelessly of myself. Uh, and so I would encourage you not to hold back the information, but to open up your hands and release it and let everyone know because you'd be surprised how many people can help you or are willing to help you and support you when you just openly and freely give of yourself. So um, I want to do these. I, I, look. I don't know what else to give folks. You know, you said contract, the contract is very competitive. They're giving out, and I just want to, let me point this out really quick because I don't even know, I've made this observation in the past. Uh, let me just show you really quickly something. I don't think you guys realize that. Um, does anybody remember, right? Okay, in the regulations, in the rules, it says here, let's go back to the top. I have to say this because I want people to understand that sometimes we are our own worst enemy. In fact, you know what? Screw it. All the times we are our own worst enemy, it's the it's the little thing up here in our heads that's stopping us. Okay. Can you read? It says here, phase one, how many up to how many prizes are they giving? Right? 60. Do y'all see that on the screen? Does everyone see that? 60. Prizes, phase one for partnership track, 30 prizes, phase one finance track. That's 90 prizes of 100,000 each. Okay. Now let's go over here. Not here. Not check. Not here. Okay. So if they're giving out 90 prizes, 60 and 30. Thank you, Just OD. Do you see that? Boom. Thank you, Just OD. There's only 43 teams. They're giving out 90 prizes. Do you know what happens when we don't submit? They send the money back. And they say that we gave it to them and they didn't show up. Nobody is like, you cannot blame no administration. You can't blame policy. You could only blame yourself. So if you, the 82 people on here watching, do not put this in the streets and give this information to people so that people can respond and help serve us, you are doing yourself a disservice. You're doing your community a disservice. You should feel guilty. I want y'all to lose sleep at night for not telling somebody about this. I want you to lose sleep. I want you to. I want y'all to have anxiety, and I want you to blame yourself. This is look. You can't tell nobody. Like I mean, you have the stats, you have the information, and so when they, I mean, we sit back on the news and we go, oh, uh, all this money, and they had to send the money back, send the money back. I didn't know. Now you know. It closes May twenty fourth. It closed May twenty fourth. Here's the dates. There's a webinar tomorrow. Get registered. Prize closes May 24th. You got almost freaking, you got what? April, May. You got two whole months to write 50 to 200 word page summary, a three minute video, a cover page, and a slide. You got two months to write this. I'm just telling you, like, uh, I, 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 I'm just, I say this because it's disheartening. And I get it. I know. I know. I know. I know. Trust me. I know. Like you said, you know, people say that I don't do that because they, I'm telling you, they want to help. They want to help. Okay. I personally, I don't know if you saw this. I personally spoke at the Department of Energy's uh, summit a few weeks ago. They invited me to speak. I was on stage. I was on a panel and I spoke. And they invite me. And you know what I said? I said, the fact that they invited me, a podcaster and a YouTuber, to speak at the Department of Energy headquarters, they are serious about making a change and they want 
So they want this to happen. So I'm telling you, there's a reason why I'm up here. There's a reason why I'm talking about it. You're going to find out soon. But they really do want us to participate. They're making an effort. They're bringing down the requirements. That's why it's not a contract. That's why it's not a grant. That's why it's not limited to corporations. That's why it's not limited to certified vendors. That's why it's not. They're not restricting the pool like everyone else does. Limited to this and that and this and that and this and that. You got to be this, this, boop, 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 boop. There's no limit. There, there, there's no limitation. You could be an individual. You could be a team. You could be a nonprofit. You could be a for-profit. You could be a, a single person. You could, there's no limitations. So you, you can't even say, like, I'm not qualified. Like, everybody's qualified. You can't say, like, oh, well, um, I don't know how to write proposals. They didn't ask you to write proposal. Oh, what's the template? They gave you the template. They're, they're lowering the barriers so that people that look like the people that are sitting here, the 73 people watching it, can apply because they're working from bottom-up solutions instead of top-down. Would you prefer that they gave this money to, like, uh, J.P. Morgan or Deloitte? And they had Deloitte come and try to implement solutions in your backyards. Is that what y'all want? Because if you don't apply for the money, they're going to go back to doing things the traditional way, which is give it to the big companies and let them decide what's best for you and your communities. Instead of saying, hey, guys, can you guys come up with ideas for what's best in your communities? We want to hear from you. And we're going to pay you for your ideas. And we're going to pay you to test your ideas to implement it. I'm just saying it's a new day. It's a new age. I don't know how long it's going to last. But I'm just recommending that um, this is this is something that I haven't seen and I want to share it with people. And again, I've, I've, I've talked about this four times, no, three times, yeah, three times now internally with my team. They still only have, they, when, before when I first talked about it, they had 12 teams. They had 12 teams, and then I talked about it again, they had 30 teams. Now they have 43 teams. So, right, Stephanie, exactly. I'm getting frustrated because people sit here and tell me, like, they don't have opportunities. When we're clearly, right, clearly uh, we're sharing opportunities with folks that essentially uh, all of us are eligible to do. So, all right, I'm done. I'm getting off my high horse. My mama called me. I'm going to go talk to my mama. And I will see y'all later. Enjoy your night. Uh, and Wednesday, we'll do another YouTube Live. We'll be doing a Q&A session. So uh, get your hair done, your makeup done, whatever, because we're bringing people up to the stage. So don't make excuses for what you look like. All right? Wednesday, come live. Same time, same place. I'll see you then. Good night.